Good morning, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project Magnetic Reversal News and Shinrin Yoku bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update Sunday, March 14th, around 11 a.m. Mountain Time 2021. The models are in and they are not looking fun. And the big story is just that a massive storm slams the west, flooding, tornadoes, hail possible across the south. Colorado is in for what experts are calling a blockbuster storm. Keep calm. It's boom time. Millions are under winter storm advisories as blizzards and heavy rain move across the U.S. Blizzards. Sunday morning update. Heavy snow expected to last until Sunday afternoon, and it's coming down. We've been checking the interwebs. Here's a tweet from the National Weather Service. Heavy snow, possible blizzard conditions are expected to envelop the central Rockies and central high plains. Well, they have, and it's ongoing. Widespread travel impacts happening now as strong winds combining with snowfall rates of one to two inches per hour produce blizzard conditions expected to last for another four hours. And that's until this afternoon. We're gonna come over here to some of the live updates from Phil Plate. And this is the current situation here one hour ago and you can see the earlier tweets, same spot, 20 hours ago, 15 hours ago, and an hour ago. So, Definitely blizzard conditions there. The electric grid just went down for Phil a few minutes ago, then came back on. It was quite scary. Their battery should be good for a few hours if it happens again. And here's an update here along the Colorado-Wyoming border 45 minutes ago. They've got 22 inches. It's still coming down hard. 25 mile per hour wind, six foot drifts. The wind generator here is keeping this guy going but he can start the gas generator to charge batteries. So that's good news there. So they're getting crushed on the Colorado Wyoming border as I bloviate. Let's check the power outage map. And moments ago, Colorado had 11,624 out. I think that's the current number. And that number should rise rapidly. It just started coming up a few hours ago. And as we get updates, we should see an upwards, of, I would think 100,000 by this evening in Wyoming and Colorado with the power out. Current, yes, customers now out to 33,000. In less than an hour, we've tripled that number. And so my predictions are coming true. So hopefully you're prepared for what's happening. Big snowfall forecast for southern Minnesota tonight as the storm moves east and a little north. Six or more inches expected in southwest metro area will get less. But it's a big boom. And we're going to check the models for you after we talk about the current advisory. Significant wind, wind, wintry travel hazards in the high plains, heavy rain storm shift to the Mississippi Valley. Now heavy snow and blowing snow from a powerful storm will continue uh, to hit the high, in the high plains, Denver and the metro area. Two to four feet of snow with widespread blizzard conditions will persist into early next week. Isolated severe storms and heavy rain that could cause flash flooding shifts into the Mississippi Valley. So for the next few days, we're going to have blizzards moving north and flooding rain, hail, and tornadoes moving south. Welcome to your future, a future that is, well, kind of moist, and it, we need it. So let's walk you through. Here's your Sunday. And that heavy snow is going to continue to fall all day into the evening, moving over into uh, Nebraska and South Dakota. Say it ain't so, does snow moving into the northern Sierras also this evening. And there you can see the snow exploding through the Sierras on Monday and the blizzard moving east. Southern Minnesota, northern Iowa, northern Indiana, southern Wisconsin, northern Illinois, Michigan. You're only going to get a little bit of snow. Top Knott's boyhood home should only see a few inches, but it will be blustery. And now we look down here in the south, the mid-Atlantic, we see... Central Virginia, Southern Virginia, the Virginia, West Virginia line going to be picking up some significant snow here Monday, Tuesday. That's their lose day. Looks like a little bit coming into Philly as well on Tuesday. And that is the highest resolution we need. There's more systems moving through, but probably going to change. Now, the European model is showing some pretty devastating effects here. Here we are on March 16th, two days from now. And here is the 16th playing out through the 17th. 
Watch what happens as we hit the 18th. Snow's going to move through France, down into Spain, and then hit those growing regions in a big way. It does not snow down here a lot, especially like this. This will be the second major snow event this winter, and now it's the spring, ding, ding. And down here by Alicante at the point and south is where they grow food. And so it's not looking good for the food growing regions. End of March, southern Spain. Uh, northern Africa also is going to get pummeled. Seismic update. We've got Mauna Loa waking up, 2.6 in Hawaii. We have some interesting quakes in the U.S. here. Brainerd, Tennessee, hello. Did you feel that adapt? And we've got two frack quakes here in Kansas and Oklahoma. Absolutely disgusting. But Iceland's the big boomer, 5.3. Alfontes, Iceland, and that has to do with the Fagradosval volcano. And we'll get to that in just a moment and the ongoing eruption. Real quick look at space weather for you guys, and we just came out of a quick geomagnetic storm six hours ago. This has to do with the coronal hole increasing that plasma speed way up there, up to about 600. Here you can see the phi angle shift two days ago, and that's all calming down as we speak and should fall back to normal values in just a few hours, hours of powers. Volcano watch, by failing to prepare you are preparing to fail. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance as we prepare for the inevitable. Welcome to the show. Mauna Loa has been in the news lately as the volcano continues to awaken from its slumber. While an eruption of Mauna Loa is not currently imminent, it is eventual. And now is the time to revisit personal eruption plans for you if you live on the island. So this map has been shared in the last few days around the interwebs, and it shows the direction of the lava and the time in which it takes to reach houses. And this is the Fisher area of Mauna Loa, the main caldera up top here, and where the eruptive activity has happened over the last several hundred years. In the light blue zone, lava flows from this region can reach populated areas in a week to months. And that last flow there was in 84. In the orange zone, lava flows from this region of Mauna Loa can reach populated areas in days to weeks. Last eruption, 1859, in the red zone, where many people live. Lava flows from this region can reach populated areas in hours. Hours of powers, last eruption, 1950. And in the beige zone here, 1880, the last eruption, lava flows from this segment of Mauna Loa can reach populated areas in days to weeks. So based on all the historical information, and this is an excellent synopsis and an article, if you live on the big island, you can prepare to get out if Mauna Loa should start to erupt, which it will at some point. Now here's the current seismicity at the Requianus Ridge in the Fagrados Fall volcano. And we are just updating for you real quick here. 5.4 kicked off. This is after a 4.7 and, and an uptick in larger quakes that we talked about the other evening. And Seismic tremor began about uh, 12, 18 hours ago and has been ongoing in the low levels, but we have all this high magnitude activity happening in the last two, four hours, which could be the top crust cracking, setting off those seismos even higher. And we could be seeing lava hitting the surface anytime now. Here's the latest update on the volcano coming from Iceland geology. Magma dipe seems to have stopped close to the Natagi Valley south of Fagradosval. Fagra Dalj Fall. Beautiful valley or something, whatever that means. So we're waiting, we're watching Worldwide Volcano News Update. We got Popo, Reventador, Sangay, Sakorajima, Liwotol, and Sabankaya, and we're waiting for Etna and its 13th paroxysm. Did you hear that? Another mystery boom leaves San Diego grasping for answers. It's probably a sonic boom, secret military operations ramping up. Nothing more. Fully vaccinated Hawaii healthcare worker contracts COVID-19 months after fully vaccinated. So there's that. But it's safe, folks. Now the FBI sends in an armored vehicle with a turret, two vans, six FBI vehicles, three local police vehicles, destroy a home to arrest a young father that was outside of the Capitol on the 6th. And he's being held without bail. Never went inside. But that is the police state and the um, socialist Nazi empire that you all voted for with uh, Beijing Biden there. Scientists solve another piece of the puzzling antikythera mechanism. And they've actually 
been doing research continuously on this baby for 100 plus years. And they are now re making a complete reconstruction due to advances in X-ray technology, tomography, and 3D imaging. They have now created working models of the Antikythera machine, which is based on some very bad, very bad astronomy. So, and if you go dive deep into it, this machine could be used for shipping, but it was based on false premises and epicycles in planets, which made it ever more difficult to understand and fascinating to believe that before we even knew that all the planets revolved around the sun, we built a computer to simulate everything revolving around the earth. Isn't that mind blowing? How far we have come. Well, not really all the flat earthers and all that dumb shit. What is that? Ghost bird spooks woman when she spots the rare creature sitting on a fence post. Well, upon inspection, it's not that rare, but it is completely insane looking. If you don't know what the potu is, it's a relative to, let's say, owls that we mostly know about. But these live in South America, the Southern Hemisphere, and some areas of Central America, all the way up to Costa Rica. They're mostly nocturnal. They make a very weird sound, like someone dying or screaming. <laughs> and it really freaks people out in the jungle. But this woman found a potu during the day, and there's video of it, so I suggest you come and watch it, because it, it is totally creepy. And there is the potu in question. I love learning weird stuff. Jaw-dropping fossil find contains a dinosaur sitting on an entire clutch of eggs. Now, they think this is amazing because it proves that dinosaurs like chickens are warm-blooded and they also brood and sit on their eggs for long periods of time to hatch them. So, completely different than what anyone's taught in grade school or high school or even college currently. But, nonetheless, now, what we should glean from this as catastrophists is that this bird was sitting on a clutch of eggs when it was completely buried and preserved. So that is what happens on planet Earth regularly. Just like Pompeii, this bird got buried instantaneously while brooding and is now preserved for us to look at today. Tens of millions of years later. Absolutely fantastic. And here's the paper. An oviraptorid preserved atop an embryo bearing egg clutch sheds light on the reproductive biology of non-avian theropod dinosaurs. Yeah, they were warm blooded. Hello. Now the list of banned books in 2010 will blow your mind because it's ever increasing in 2021. Hello. Because it includes many of the books that we believe are very important, including books about EU theory and alternative science. Emmanuel Velikovsky, Banned, 2010, Worlds in Collision. Electric Sun by, Electric Sun by Donald Scott, Banned, in 2010. Gravitational Mystery Spots by Doug Vogt, Banned, in 2010. Seven Experiments That Could Change the World. Rupert Sheldrake, Banned, in 2010. This is the world we're entering into. Where actual information is banned because disinformation, well, that's key. And that's king. Now, Earth's rocks contain a hidden ocean's worth of water. We reported on this. Papers being written in the last year or so that one-third the volume of the oceans are contained in subduction zones, potentially. But that is an understatement. Scientists say a massive amount of water exists deep beneath the planet's surface and not just in subduction zones. It's locked inside the molecular structure of minerals in the mantle. Specifically, the mineral you're looking at here. This is a blue-colored mineral called ringwoodite, and it can be synthesized in the lab. The mineral can include a significant amount of water in its crystal structure deep below the Earth's surface, which has led many to speculate that there may be an entire volume of the entire ocean in the deep mantle between four and 600 miles below your feet. Now, is there a mechanism that releases this water catastrophically, let's say during magnetic reversals, causing maybe an upwelling of volumes of water from the oceans, creating an entire planetary-wide flood that's just temporary? We'll know soon enough. Read the paper. And that's a boom. Proper prior planning prevents piss-poor performance when the mantle may be about to unleash the entire volume of the ocean on the planet. 
Is that even possible? Anything's possible. In a world where everything is opposite, we ask you to be safe. Share this video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Thanks to all our one-time donors, our Patreons. We love you. Click on one of the other boxes to gain more knowledge and be safe. It's a blizzard out there for some of you. That's a boom.